Warner Brothers announced that they'll be pursuing more live service games, right after the massive success of Hogwarts Legacy and the dumpster fire that is Suicide Squad. Warner Brothers has said its plans to focus on free-to-play and live service games going forward despite premium standalone single-player RPG Hogwarts Legacy being the best-selling game of 2023. As highlighted by GameSpot, Warner Brothers Discovery gaming boss J.B. Perrett recently spoke at Morgan Stanley Technology Conference where he discussed the company's plans, which include a pivot to free-to-play and live service games. This revelation is surprising as Warner Brothers' biggest release last year was Hogwarts Legacy, which doesn't feature either of these elements. Quotes, we're doubling down on games as an area where we think there is more growth opportunity that we can tap into with the IP that we have and some of the capabilities we have on studio, where we're uniquely positioned as both a publisher and a developer of games. Despite the company's previous success with AAA games for consoles, Perrette said the market is volatile and that success is never guaranteed as demonstrated by both Hogwarts Legacy and Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League launches. To combat this, the exec says the company plans to instead focus on core franchises and bring some of them to mobile free-to-play market, as well as continuing to invest in live service games that players will spend money on over time. This doesn't mean that Warner Brothers will stop developing single-player AAA games entirely, but according to the exec, quote, rather than just launching a one-and-done console game, how we develop a game around, for example, a Hogwarts Legacy or Harry Potter that is a live service where people can live and work and build and play in that world in an ongoing basis. Following this, the industry analyst Matt Briscalia shared his thoughts on the Warner Brothers news to Twitter, writing, quote, When a company points out that they believe making the best-selling premium game of the year did not provide enough return to not pivot the franchise that game was based on to F2P live service, well, that's a problem. Now, Warner Brothers is completely wrong on doing this, doubling down after launching a huge goose egg and still believing that this should be the primary focus is what's killing many gaming studios. Warner Brothers isn't the only one pursuing this model as many gaming studios are having to create live service games because their corporate bosses don't want to pay them to work without something still coming in. That's why everyone is adding skins and maps and knickknacks and paddywhacks to their games in order to generate quarters for years instead of getting a one big wave of revenue followed by smaller revenue from buyers who purchase the games while it's on sale. But all of this is just another example of corporate not understanding what made their games great. Yeah, you might have people who want to play an online Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings, but not everything should be or can be live service. Hogwarts Legacy at maximum could allow competitive racing and dueling, but all in all, the game is driven to be a single player narrative. Where would you put the live service? Wine customization? Shadow of Mordor incorporated the bare minimum of online play with taking keeps and dueling captains and allowed a little live service for loot system but the same conclusion as Hogwarts Legacy. The upcoming Wonder Woman should have no life service included into it and will ruin the game entirely, if they do. Suicide Squad should have been a single player game with no life service that allowed you to play level missions, each focusing on different members' innate abilities, such as Deadshot's sniping and Killer Shark swimming. Some people may have wanted a more open world. I, I think if you went in that direction, the story should have followed someone like Harley Quinn as the main character. And I still would have probably wanted it as level missions, sort of like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't know all that Warner Brothers has in their vault that they can turn into a live service, but it's safe to assume that we'll probably have a lot more MMO games coming out soon. Or at least highly customizable games with hundreds of different skins for guns that can suck a penny out parents' pockets. Or maybe they'll find someone like Epic Games, like Disney did, and create a Warner Brothers universe. Either way, the upcoming lineup of Warner Brothers games looks to be only Wonder Woman will be a non-live service. And that's a little bit of hope that maybe that we'll at least get a couple of single-player games in between all these marketplace slash games because that's what it is. Many of these games will be created to be a marketplace first and then a game second. But outside of that, you guys have a good one. Bye.